Hello everyone. We will start our revision and I picked up here some topics which I believe we need to go over again quickly. Uh, that's, that's, that's my judgment based on the feedback I received from you through tests and other activities. And we will cover in this part uh, Mason's theorem and the steady state error. Then the part 1b will cover the rest of, of the material. We start with Mason's uh, theorem. What it does, it gives us a transfer function uh, for output over input. The output could be C. We could choose the output as C and find the transfer function output over reference R. Or we can find the error, signal E over R or F over R. The main thing to note here is the delta is the same for all transfer functions. So this is the same for all transfer function. And this is very significant because delta equals zero will give you the poles of the dynamic system and the location of the poles will determine the performance of the system. So while some of you might be able to uh, manipulate the block diagram and get the transfer function, uh, application of Mason theorem will give you the, the dynamic characteristics of the system uh, very simply. So, as an example, we will use this uh, block diagram. The formula looks complex, but it's not really that complex when we start to apply it. For example, the first part here, delta is 1 minus sigma Li. That's the sum of all loop gains. How many loops do we have? We have one loop here, loop number two loop number three, and the loop gain, you go around the loop, multiply the gain, and taking in, take into account uh, if there is a minus sign like here, for example. So loop number one, the gain will be G1, G2, H1 minus, and so on. So we can find simply Li, the first term, sum of all loop gains. We have three loops. And you can find the gains minus G1, G2, H1. That's the minus from here. Loop 2, it's minus G3, G4, H2. And loop 3, H3, G3, G2. And it, there is no minus. It's all plus. The second term, and I will try to change the color code to green if I can. I'm unable to. So I'll stay with red. And the second term here, you look at the non-touching loops, pair of loops. Loops number one and three are touching. This is the touching element. Loops number two and three are also touching through G3. But loops one and two are not touching. So you find the loop gains for one and two, multiply them together. It's basically loop one gain multiplied by loop two gain. Then you look after that for uh, uh, triple loops which are not touching, which it very rarely will, you will be able, to, you will be required to deal with such a complex examples. So in this case, we'll just look at the uh, example we have. We have two non-touching loops. We end up with delta equals, we only have this term and this term, and then you get the expression. This is the first part, and this is the second part. That's delta. And of course, remember, delta equals zero gives us the characteristics equation of the system, which is what we use in determining the stability and the dynamic performance of the system. Now, what about the rest? We, we had pi delta i. What is pi delta i? pi is the path gain from the input to the output. For example, if we choose c of s over r of s, then the gain will be 
go from the input to the output, multiply all these blocks, G1, G2, G3, G4, take the sign into consideration, it's all plus. So in this case, that will be PI. If C is the output, then you can find that PI. What about delta I? Delta I delete all the nodes and the elements that make PI and then find delta for the remaining part of the block diagram. If we delete that path, nothing will be left and we calculate delta I with, for the new system and the new system will have no loops, no loop gains. So it will be min one minus zero. So delta I will be one. You have it here. In this case, we can say that T C over R is the PI delta I. This part is PI delta I. Well, delta I is 1 and divided by delta. Now we will consider typical cases that appear in uh, tutorials and class and maybe even exams. So we look at this simple case where we only have one loop. Very simply, the loop gain is minus k g of s. So delta will be 1 minus the loop gain will be 1 plus k g s. Then if we wanted to find the y over r, then the pi will be k g s over delta, that gives the transfer function. If we want to find um, U, the control signal over R, that will give the forward path PI will be K. And if you want to find the error signal E over R from input to the output, this is the output now, so it's one over delta. You see, the, the beauty here is Delta is the same for all transfer functions. What changes is PI delta I in each case. Now we look at a case where there is some disturbance, G of S. And you may recognize this G of S here, G of S, as the transfer function of a, a servo motor, a DC motor. And in this case, again, we start by finding delta. And delta is 1 minus the loop gains. So give the expression. You can simplify it to get the assured delta. Then y over r, the forward path, it will be k multiplied by g of s, 1 over s, j, s plus b. So you end up with y over r is p of i delta i. Again, delta i is 1 over delta. Simplify, you get the transfer function. What about the error signal e over r? e over r, the path gain will be 1. So e over r, 1 over delta. Simplify, you get the expression. What if I wanted to find how is the output y is influenced by the disturbance d? Delta is the same. It's the same system. But using superposition, we assume r equals 0, then that will not affect delta. But pi going from the input to the output. So that will give you PI will be G of S. So the expression here, Y over D is this. That's our PI delta I over delta. Simplify, you get the expression. Note here that in all cases, you get the same delta, even after you simplify. 
which is, is, is a very, very useful application of Mason's formula. One of the design uh, aspects, which you faced it in various exercises, is uh, to find the steady state error. The steady state error E to a reference input. And we used uh, a step input or a ramp input. Step and ramp, remember, they are typical test signals which we use to test a control system. So what we uh, applied here in the steady state error, the e sta error steady state is find the value of the error in t as t equals to infinity go approaches infinity. But we use the property of Laplace transform, and Laplace transform says, instead of find the limit as t equals to infinity, find the limit of, and instead of e of t, s e of s. Remember, multiply s by e of s and find the limit as s equals to approaches 0. Let's apply that. This system, we have the transfer function now, and we put in some values for j and b. We can say that our error signal is this, e of s, determine the value of the gain that limits the steady state error to less than, equal to less than uh, 1%. So what do we do? Find the transfer function. Which transfer function? It's E of s over R of s. How do we find it? It's sigma pi di over delta. What is delta? Delta is 1 minus, in this case, the loop gain. So delta is 1 minus minus, because the loop gain is minus k multiplied by g. So that's delta, and now delta is function of k. Then the transfer function E over R, the forward path from input to output is 1 over delta. It gives that expression. What do you want to do? We want to find the error, the condition, the value of k that gives us the error, E of steady state error, less than or equal to uh, 1 percent, point oh one. How do we do that? We have E of s equals that expression multiplied by R of s. Multiply E of s by s and find the limit as s equals to 0. So here we do it. And instead of working with t, we work in s e of s. Change the limit to s equal to, equal to 0. This is the expression we obtained there. And here, r of s, it says ramp input. Ramp input in the s domain is 1 over s squared. To simplify this, I will try to change the pen color, unable to do it again. But you have one s here will take the square out. The other s here will take this s out. Put s equals to 0. This term will disappear. This term will disappear. You will end up with 1 over k. And that's what we get. We need to make this error, which equals 1 over k, equal to 0.01. How? Obviously, that's when oh, that will give us k greater than or to 100. So 1 over 100 will be 0.01. So this is important, how to do the steady state error. A common mistake, well, I gave you one example a while back. When the input was not a ramp input, the input was a step input. And we know for the step input, the, the uh, R, when it's a step input, in the S domain, it's 1 over S. So we have E of S 
multiplied by s then this is the r you should cancel this with this and find the, the limit when s goes to zero what many of you did is just forgot this and this and found that the limit when e of s equals to zero that's why uh, i i will i intend to change things a bit that's why i give you this example with the ramp input because here you have to put one over s squared but this is the expression that should be should be used to calculate that steady state error now you would remember the system type system type is different from the order of the system the system type depends on the number of poles at s equals to zero number of free integrators for example this first example here transfer function no free integrator so it's type zero here we have one integrator so it's type one here we have three integrators so the system is type three so the system type depends on the number of free integrators and depending on the system type you get the steady state error values for different inputs and here are is the summary of the value of the steady state error as function of the system type for type 0 1 and 2 and different input and ramp input and step input ramp input and uh, acceleration input so that's briefly a review of Mason's formula and the steady state error. I'll see you next time.